Space, the final frontier. Now there's a familiar line that greeted us every week as James T. Kirk, Jean-Luc Picard, and several other captains led us on adventures where no one has gone before. But if you want a real space adventure right here in West Tennessee, we found the guy. I've been doing astronomy basically almost since 1956 when I was in high school. I remember the first Sputnik went up and, and uh, of course I've seen people land on the moon. And um, Interest in astronomy at the public level has waxed and waned, of course, over the years. And it's, right now I would say it's uh, waxing again. Uh, probably the, lo the lowest level occurred uh, probably maybe 10 years after the last moon landing. That took place around 1974-75. Uh, it seemed like uh, our country kind of lost interest in space exploration and uh, funding uh, space activities at the proper level until around 1985 or so. But since that time, I think the uh, uh, public's interest uh, has, has actually gone up. Dr. Barnes captains the MD Anderson Planetarium at Lambeth University. In my philosophy about our planetarium is we try to be very educational and we try to give uh, the public and our students the best m we can about modern astronomy and it's uh, the principles that, that govern it. Um, that is our primary goal. Uh, secondary course is, goal, of course, is to make, make it entertaining as much as we can for the, uh, the audience, too. So there's a gee whiz, you might say, aspect as well as uh, informational content. The planetarium was a gift to Lambeth and the community from Monroe Dunaway Anderson. The doors opened in 1973, constructed during a time of heightened interest in space science. I think if you did a survey of colleges about the size of Lambeth, you would find it's relatively rare. Uh, on the other hand, these type planetaria, many of them were put in back in the 60s when there was a lot of money coming from the space program for the advancement of astronomy and public knowledge of astronomy and space science. And uh, some of the money that, built this, that helped build the building uh, came from the, the government. Hmm. And so there are a number of places that have planetaria like, like uh, the one we have here. Even some high schools uh, have uh, planetariums like Lambeth. Though small to moderate in size, the planetarium is well equipped and puts on quite a show. This is the uh, planetarium, uh, what we call star projector. And the, um, the big basketball-like globe in there has about oh, three or 4,000 holes, precision drilled in it, in a pattern that matches the pattern of the stars that you see in the night sky. There's a very bright uh, xenon-mercury arc light at the center of the uh, basketball globe, and so when you turn the lights off in the room and the xenon light is on, then you get uh, cast up on the dome a, a uh, recreation, you might say, of the night sky with constellations and so on. These cylinders on the projector create the planets and their orbits. The control panel puts it all together with simulated sunsets, satellites, meteor showers, and colorful auroras. In addition to shows designed for all ages, the planetarium is also connected with the Space Telescope Science Institute, providing the latest images from the Hubble Telescope and NASA. On Tuesday evenings from late September through April, the general public is invited to explore the universe with a special treat on clear nights. A lot of people come here because they know that if it's clear on a Tuesday public night, uh, we set up a telescope and actually look through a telescope and they can put their eye and get the energy coming from that object right on their retina and they feel connected to the universe. Uh, I, to me, that is, is something that uh, a lot of uh, our patrons have, have uh, commented very positively about, and they feel that maybe is unique. Because you go to, uh, say, a big city planetarium, often uh, they don't, they'll give you a very nice show and uh, a lot of special effects, but they may not do anything that connects you personally with the universe. Whereas, uh, I mean, they will with slides and everything, but it's not, there's something special about looking at a tiny image of Saturn through a, a telescope as opposed to looking at it on, a, on a, uh, a big screen. The big screen will show you more, but when you see it through the telescope, you somehow, a lot of people say it's more real to them. We're all stardust, which is a way of saying that the elements that make us up, like oxygen and iron and calcium and so on, were actually manufactured in stars that blew themselves up and then later on got those elements got into our bodies. Uh, this, this is, a, as Carl Sagan used to say, is a cosmic connection between us and those big nuclear reactors up there in the sky. So I want our students to know why we have confidence in this rather amazing view 
of things. To say that the universe began uh, about, say, 14 billion years ago, how do we know that? Uh, and began as something maybe as small as a baseball and then expanded to the present size. Those are, are astounding statements to make and, uh, and students when they come out of an astronomy course ought to be able to know why uh, astronomers or physicists have confidence in those statements and why they, they should be taken a little bit more seriously than uh, maybe people would say, oh, that's just a theory. Shuttle missions, the space station, Jupiter probes, and Mars exploration have all contributed to a renewed interest in space. And what about the president's goal of a manned Mars mission? As a kind of a space junkie and a person who used to dream about being an astronaut and riding around in spacecraft and everything, uh, I think that's quite exciting, you know, and if I were the one chosen to, to, to do the trip, I, I would be very excited about it. I'm happy for that reason. Uh, there is one concern from, from my point of view, and that is the money needed to do a manned exploration of Mars is really quite a bit, uh, safely, is, is quite a bit, and it would probably detract, or not sure it does detract from other uh, research that might not be so human-oriented, but which in the long run might be more valuable to, to astronomy and astrophysics. Uh, it's really too bad we probably don't have enough money to do everything that we'd like to do at the level we want to. Mars is an interesting planet. It does look like there has been a lot of water on Mars uh, at least a few billion years ago. And if the rules about biological, with the laws that govern biology are like the laws that govern gravitation and electricity and magnetism, that is, are universal, then uh, there well could have been life that have uh, that formed on Mars. And then if you discover that there was life on Mars by going there, that would be a, a, a discovery of, well, gigantic... Uh, Proportions. In the meantime, Dr. Barnes and the planetarium will teach students and the public about the origins and the possible futures of our universe and our relationship with the stars. These questions are usually considered to be very profound. Well, they are profound questions. And so, uh, if you, if, to me, being human means you've, you're curious about your state and the world around you. That, that distinguishes us from just we think it distinguishes us from, you know, from animals and, and other, other types of life. So that's part of being human, is to want to know. And so uh, I hope that uh, after the people take at least my course, they will have some of that uh, curiosity satisfied and will want to know more.